and being discussed by doctors and surgeons to keep their patients awake during surgery. Not only is it less expensive than going under full sedation, it's also good for patients who may not recover as well from general anesthesia. So let's talk about the benefits and the risks with Dr. Ali Kazrayan. Good to have you here. So this is designed to give the patient autonomy in some cases. Good idea, bad idea? Well, I mean, this is actually not a very new concept, you know, doing procedures when people are awake. I mean, it was actually the original form of surgery before anesthesia. Uh, this is basically an assessment of risk benefits. So what you're trying to do is put patients under the least amount of risk when you're undergoing a procedure. So it's a c continuation of this concept of minimizing risk, optimizing benefits. But it is something that is looked at as, as maximizing patient autonomy, whether it's because they're curious about what's going on, whether there's distrust in what's going on, so they want to be awake to really, really vet the system um, or, or the, pr the procedure itself, uh, whatever the re and hopefully that's not the reason, because if that's the case, I urge people to, to, to talk to their physician and make sure that they're comfortable with the procedure and not have being awake uh, to, to view the procedure as their way of making sure everything's okay. Um, but it's an assessment of risk. A lot of procedures, orthopedic procedures, urological procedures, all across the breadth of surgical specialties can be done with local anesthesia, regional anesthesia. Um, but it's, it's, it's to see if we can kind of minimize the amount of risk associated with anesthesia. That being said, anesthesia is very safe. The goals are to minimize uh, discomfort, make sure that the patient's comfortable, and optimize the setting to, to, to reach our main goal have a safe operation, optimize the settings to perform that safe operation with a desired outcome. And there's, there's another reality here. They don't call the OR operational theater for no reason. I mean, the patient has to be prepared for what really goes on. And there's some things that are a little more casual than they might expect. So there, not only is, is it not like going to a, you know, watching the, the operation as you would on a, on a movie screen or in, in a TV show, but also uh, be mindful that what you're going to be observing is not necessarily for the faint of heart. And so when, when anesthesiologists are performing regional anesthesia and things that are more local, they are prepared for the, for the possibility that someone may not be able to withstand what they're watching. So there's and always you hear the doctor B. go, uh, you know, I need a bigger blade. That could be really disconcerting for a patient. So it's interesting. Actually, a study was done where they kind of looked at how communication with, with, between surgeons and their patients and also other people in the room is undertaken. And, and things are being uh, moved in directions where those kind of communication skills are being vetted and, and, and being uh, attended to so that things like that don't necessarily happen because you have to be mindful how those communications are, are undertaken, especially in academic institutions where you're teaching residents how to operate. You have to be mindful how you have those conversations in a way that it doesn't scare the patient. So if it's best for you, find out by talking to your doctor before you go into the OR, have your eyes wide open before you decide whether or not you want them wide shut. If you know someone who may be having surgery soon and would be interested in Sharing this interview, it'll be posted at about 10.30 this morning on the Morning Show page of newsforjax.com. Dr. Arley, always a pleasure.